Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Had a lot of questions about the solar power on the uh, M416 trailer, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I don't think this will be a long video. Hey, do us a favor and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to make good quality content for everyone, and I want to know what your feedback is. Uh, I want you to know when new videos come out, and I want to know what other kind of videos you might want to see related to Jeeps and my overlanding trailer stuff. So, with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started here. We're starting with the uh, solar panel itself. It's a 100 watt panel from Renogy. Uh, it's very sturdy. It, it, it works really well. Uh, no real issues there. Uh, what I did is I mounted that onto my vertical supports for the roof rack that telescopes up and, up and down. That's a better view right there. So you can see here, it mounts to the vertical support. These uh, are in a solar panel oh, a frame, I guess is what you'd call it. And this frame allows this, you, you undo these screw things, and it allows the solar panel to be maneuvered at almost any angle that you want, up to uh, 90 degrees. So it, it can go from its current position out to just about any, variation all the way until it gets uh, at perpendicular horizontal to you know the the top plane of the uh, the trailer so you can kind of position it where you need it to get the most sunlight it works out really well I'm not going to do a demo of that because <clears throat> you know you can look those up I'll try and put a link in you can see from this angle here where the solar panel cables are so, and what I did is I ran those down into uh, some flex tubing, and they go into our power box, and I'll show you that in just a second. So this is the uh, solar panel cabling. It goes into that flex tubing. That flex tubing has more than just that cabling in it. So um, the lighting for uh, cables go in there, the CB antenna go in, and some of that tubing as well. But it basically all curls down and goes down into the back of the power box to the oopsie there you go that's a better view to the solar charge controller okay, so here's the wire loom um, sorry I'm shaking <clears throat> that those cables go in and you can see there's a big loop there and the reason there's a big loop here is because the rooftop rack and uh, smitty built tent rooftop tent are on a telescoping rack. Uh, so this rack raises and lowers 18 inches and I needed to keep that loop there so that as it's raised, uh, you know, it doesn't stress out on any of the cabling, etc. Works out really well. You can see there's uh, the same thing for the lighting uh, for that side of the, uh, the trailer there. Um, and the way I've got it working is basically in that flex tubing wrapped with some uh, black electrical tape to give it a little more rigidity okay okay so this is the inside of the battery box you can see the cabling comes in for the solar panel hits the solar charge controller and from <clears throat> that it comes out and it's wired to my two batteries so these are 12 volt batteries that I've got wired up um, and they are 35 amp so that gives me 70 yeah 70 amp hours uh, and 12 volts of power and everything's running right off of that um, so that works out pretty good so we, we talked about the batteries very briefly so these are compact uh, gel batteries deep cycle and I've got the two in there right now now I have space to put a third one I just need to move my uh, uh, solar, solar charge controller over just an inch or two and I'll be able to put in a third battery if I deem it's necessary. You don't have to get a lot of big honking batteries per se to get a lot of amp hours. Look for something that's uh, inexpensive. I think these are like 70 bucks a piece. Some people may think that's not expensive, but if you look at some of those other marine deep cycle batteries that are out there, they can be a lot more expensive. So unless you're going to power air conditioning and a lot of other stuff, you don't need a whole heck of a lot. So I uh, just wanted to kind of, you know, call that out. And, uh, you know, you don't need a huge battery box. You just need to put, kind of plan out what you want to put in it. Uh, word of caution, they do get cramped pretty quick. So, uh, you know, think about what you want to do. 
I come over here, I can kind of show you a little bit what's inside here. So there's a, a cutoff switch, so I can cut off all the power to anything uh, that is running off the solar just by a flip of a switch. So everything's turned off right now. Buried down here, and I'm not sure if the lighting's gonna allow you to see it, but there is a uh, inverter, 1500 watt inverter, and that gives me 12 volt power. So that all worked out really nice. Uh, got a 30 amp fuse. So, put in a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter right here. So I can plug in additional items that, you know, in case I start to run a lot of stuff out of here. <clears throat> this is the wiring for some of the lighting and other accessories. And you can see it's all coming in through that black flex tubing. Sorry, the guy next door started his motorcycle. I also have a CB antenna on this particular uh, trailer. And the reason for that is I can put a CB in here, run it off the 12 volt power. If the trailer stays at camp, I can communicate with other folks that are out and about with other CBs or even, you know, if I stay home, my wife takes the Jeep somewhere uh, while we're camping, she can contact base camp. This is a view of the uh, other cabling for the other lights and, and, and things that I have going on here, uh, going into the battery box. And here is hopefully a better view of what's going on for the power for external. So once that switch is turned on inside that allows power to come out here, we've got a 12 volt electrical outlet. Uh, it's not a 12 volt, that's 120 volt. I don't know what I'm thinking about. We've got a USB port, we've got a cigarette lighter adapter. This switch here controls the uh, up and down for the um, rooftop tent rack that uh, telescopes. And here's the external lighting. So one pod is for uh, one side of the trailer, uh, the other pod's for the other side, including the rear. Um, so I've never done solar before, but this was pretty straightforward. Um, I really didn't have too many problems until I started to wire up this thing here. Uh, and that's because it came with no instructions and it was just a jumble of wires. So, and I know my wiring's not as cool or clean as a lot of other folks with, you know, their fuse boxes and things like that and negative power strips and positive power strips. But it all does work. So you don't have to be an electrician to do this. All you have to do is have the inclination and time to put into it. Um, and that's really about it. I carry spare parts down here. There's another view of, you know, the back of the inverter. Uh, pretty simple setup, really. So if you're interested in solar power while you're overlanding, camping, whatever you want to do, feel free. You know, hope you got some ideas. Uh, with the way I've got this set up and the USB cables, etc., I can put lighting uh, into inside my rooftop tent, uh, run it off the uh, USB cables directly from the outside here, and then up I can light up the entire campground around the trailer. Uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So uh, let me know what you guys think of the video. If it's a little shaky, I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. I got a little trimmer sometimes, so I apologize. But do me a favor, subscribe. We'd really love to have you as members of the family and uh, kind of go along with us on our journeys, okay? Thanks for watching.